three testimonies, maybe how your emotions got out. This emotional series has helped you in, in the fourth service. Something about your business, your finance, you can come and share on the, on the left hand side. Quickly, 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 quickly. Is the issue to come down to share? That's the issue, right? Someone said yes. No, yes, yes. Just come out on the left hand side, yeah. On the left hand side. Amen. So I need one more person to join them. Just one more person to join them to come and share. Yeah, yeah, just come, yeah, just come, just come. All right, good. Let's go. Let's start. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I wanted to come and stand here. You don't have to stand on the stage. It means you're just here so that we can see you. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Indeed, I'm really grateful. I'm from Delta State. Okay. So, so, Pastor Jerry, you have to look through the testimonies. But, um, so, this is just one minute. Just go yeah. straight to it. Yeah. Depression brought me to Lagos State. Wow. Maritally, financially, and every aspect of my life, I was really depressed. I know I was depressed. I, I, I've went through a lot. By the grace of God, my husband is a minister, and I'm a minister's uh, minister wife. If I say, let me share the story, we're not going to live here. But I want to give God glory because I came to this church through my childhood friend. When everything became tough, I was like taking my life. Each time I want to make attempt, I have, I'm a mother of two kids. So my children were like, mommy, don't worry because I, I, I wasn't myself. I'll be telling them, why is your daddy treating me like this? Am I bad? Am I wicked? Am I not okay? What is wrong with me? I know my brother, even if my, my parents were not like, uh, a group of my mother, and I, I, I grew up from a single parenting. My mom is not a Christian. I met God by grace. And God gave me this man. Why is he treating me this way? So what has so happened right now? At the end of the day, yeah. I have to, when I was about taking my life, that very Sunday, something happened. My pastor, our, uh, senior pastor came to the church to try to fix things. And my mother was like trying to cover up for his guilt, then passing blame on me. So what and happened? from that frustration, I was going, uh, I was just leaving the house. I don't know where I was going. My friend called, my childhood friend called, came in. I was like, I want to send you some money. Yeah, you are saying, please, please, I don't need money. I don't need money. I need help. I need help. That was just she was like, are you okay? Okay, come and meet me. Come and meet me. I'm in the other state. And she took me to Lagos. By the grace of God, so many things about my life has changed. In fact, I'm no more depressed. As a matter of fact, that um, um, Pastor B preached a, a topic about... Um, Called, um, Fos- the, emotional frustration. No, emotion, there's one topic like to come out from your from your shell, you know, to, to be bold. So I want to give God glory. Praise God. Life. Praise God. I, I, I'm grateful. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise God. Yes. Yes. Let's keep it. Yeah. Let's let's keep it. Yeah. Let's keep it to one and a half minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Yeah. So, growing up, I had a lot of parental trauma. A lot. It was really bad because it affected my social performance as a child. So, when I joined the NLP in 2021, around February, you know, Pastor B is to pray about generational trauma, you know, hit certain points. I got healed and... I dragged my mom to church too, and we had the courage and the grace to face all of the things that had happened. Wow. And we got our healing. And my mom is obsessed with NLP now. Wow. 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 That's a family testimony. Yeah. Praise the Lord. You can't be praising my God sitting down. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord! You are sitting down. Praise the Lord! Love it. Um, I just want to thank God for my life. Ha. I'll come back for part two. I can't finish. <laughs> so God has One been, more minute. Yes, sir. God has been very good and kind to me. And you know, I was I attended the second service, and during the course of the service, I literally looked at my life last year and this year. My birthday is tomorrow though. Ah, yes, last year and this year. And I can say for a fact that NLB, um, sorry, Harvesters has changed my life for good. In every area of my life. Last year I was depressed. 
I was on drugs. I was on too many things. Hold I, on. My health. You on drugs? Yes, sir. Which kind of drugs? Panadol. Hard one. <laughs> hard one. Yes, sir. Because I was going through a depression like phase. What is hard? Panadol. Fan- no, sir. <laughs> um, just, sir. After church. <laughs> But it wasn't cocaine and all of that, so yeah. But you know, God has changed my life for good. I remember last year on my birthday, it was a Sunday, I was in church, I was unhappy. I, I looked a mess, but look at me now. <laughs> Praise the Lord! Praise God. of you, if you can remember me last week, Sunday. <laughs> Tell me, last week, Sunday. Stan, I wanted to look at the camera. <laughs> I remember you from the hog. <laughs> Tell me, yes. God has done it. I'm so, so proud of coming to church last week. Hold hold on. Ah. This support group is a lot. Hold on. You know, some of us were not here last week Sunday. So backtrack 30 seconds. Because I couldn't even remember you. Because you know the thing? When people get better, even physically, they change. You know, they, because, you know, she, last week I was like, did I talk to her last week Sunday? Then when she hugged me, I remember the hug. Yes. You were the one that came and said, you told me yes. There's a lot of improvements in my life. And I now believe in myself. Even those negative thoughts, when they try to come in, what I do, I just worship God. Because there is no negativity in this body anymore. And I want to thank God. I'm a different person. And I, have, I believe in myself now. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Hold on. Praise the Lord. So the background of the story was that. Tell me the background to the story. Tell me. Number one, you didn't believe. T- tell me. Yet yeah, I remember you stood up. You were crying. I said you didn't believe in yourself. You didn't believe you could you could succeed in anything. And there was a shift in your mindset through the power of God, and you began to say you believe in yourself. And um, so when are you getting your shop? before leaving the church like god used the family to bless me and to be fair thank you so so much what did they bless you with yes. tell me what they blessed you with financial assistance so have you gotten the shop right now not yet what are you waiting for but i've started like getting jobs on makeup like clients have been booking now so when are you going to get the shop i will i'm going to save up i want to be the month just by faith this time next year, when are you going to get this shop? I want to get the shop. The opening should be on the 2nd of October, on my birthday. Praise the Lord. Hold on. She, she said last week, I can't succeed at anything. I failed. Look at what she's doing now. And guess what? Please tell me your name again. Margaret. Margaret, once the shop is get, I'm going to buy your daddy tickets to come. Yeah. Yeah. Because... So, we must remember between now and October 2nd that that is coming. And, you know. <laughs> even my parents watch the videos. Normally, they are supposed to even query me that why will I have that suicidal thought. But they are so proud of me that I was able to open up. And Praise God. They are really, really happy. And they are so happy, Pastor B. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. Praise Thank God. you. Thank you, Harvester's family. Thank you. Thank you so much. Praise God. Hallelujah. We have a last person, right? This is so good. This is, you know, this is so good. It's so good. Hold on. I want, what's your name? What's your name, my darling? Olamide. Olamide, yeah. Sorry, I'm trying to cut out myself.
tears of joy are not. Come. Tears of joy. God is good and kind. She said, these are tears of joy. I want to hear the story. Since when I was in SS3, I have had problems in my period. There's no way that my mom and dad have not taken me to. There's no test I haven't done. I've traveled abroad, done everything. But last year, I went through a lot from June. I was on drugs, on medical drugs, but they were making me. <laughs> no, wait. <laughs> Praise God. Please, let's listen. Yeah. I was on drugs. And I was also smoking. Because I couldn't, I couldn't gather myself together. I was always depressed. My parents didn't know what I was really going through. I would just stay in my room. My daddy would be complaining. But I just made up my mind that I'm not using this drugs again. They gave me some drugs in the hospital and I will literally I'm a very happy person sir. anybody that knows me but sir, I would just be snapping as a the littlest thing. Wow. I would I would, I, my mommy and I will have crazy fights. I will be so rude to my mom but I was going through a lot and I just couldn't. I found my way to church that was when you did some series, but this year, I didn't see my period since November last year because I stopped the drugs. So this year, when pressed, I told God that please, uh, I don't have any other person other than you. There's no, I've, I've been coming here and I must collect my testimony. When you prayed for us, I went to the toilet to check. I didn't see anything. I told the devil that it's a lie. That I'm going to see my period before the end of, before my birthday. It didn't happen. I didn't lose faith. February 10, during an OP, you prayed and you said that there's a lady that you have lost faith. So I've lost faith. So many you know was always the one calling me. That let me there, please. I beg you. That shouldn't think that I can't get pregnant. Hold on, anymore. hold on. Why is this camera not capturing? Why are you giving me a side view? I want a very direct view, please. Thank you. Yeah. February 10th, you said that there's a lady that you have lost all faith, that you are joining your faith with me. So that day, my 12 o'clock, I was on the bed. And I got up for the pen, and my period came out. I don't know how it happened. I was just screaming and shouting that, ah, you showed yourself, sir. God showed himself. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I couldn't gather myself. It wasn't like it just came out. My period came out normal flow. It wasn't like it was small. It has been like that. The next month, I come to me that day. She said, I don't think about it. The next month, the devil is going to try to shake you. It might not come on the day it's meant to come. It didn't come, but I did not think about it. My boyfriend who was always, I've never said, God will bless you, Emmanuel. He will, he will hold me and he will tell me that he doesn't want me to talk about it again. When he, when the next month came, sir. He did the same thing. He didn't come out when he was meant to come. I thought I was, I'm not going to lie, I thought about it, but the two of them, they were telling me that I must not talk about it again. So I stopped talking about it, sir. I was in the market when he came out. And all my clothes were stained. I can't remember the last time I saw my period that I had my clothes stained. This one too. He came out the same way on the tent again, the same way, and I'm like, no, it has been consistent, and I'm not going to let it's been consistent. My daddy asked me yesterday that so you stop to do your drugs, and your drug period is coming out consistently, and he nails down, sir, because they know what I have been through when it comes to my period. They know, sir. I, I even thought that I was never going to be able 
able to give birth. I didn't want to talk to anybody, no man, sir, because I just wanted to be on my own. My friend to me, Toby, she's not here. She was there when you want Toby was praying for me constantly, sir. She would lay her hands on me and said, say that God has not made has made you a complete woman. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, sir. Wow. Wave your hands and say thank you, Jesus. And you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. For you are great. great. You, you do miracles so oh great. There is no one, there is no one else, else like you. you. There is no To you be all the glory. We thank you for your love and your kindness. We thank you for your faithfulness. In Jesus' mighty name. Please, you can have your seats. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Wow, I, I didn't see that coming. You know, oh, I didn't see that coming. But God is good and kind. Praise God. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Whew. So in this service, you know, please, I want to encourage you Let's keep the habit of inviting people to join our morning prayers, next level prayers. I hope you realize that every day you'll have between 150,000 people that join the prayers. And um, the miracles are everywhere. The testimonies are everywhere. She will not be the first. I've had series when I was in the UK church. A lady walked up to me and said she never sees a period without drugs also. And she will see it once or twice in a year. He said for 6 September last year till now, she has seen a period consistently 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 praise God but I mean very powerful testimony there was a lady that had no fallopian tube because it got blocked they removed it in the UK the fallopian tube was miraculously replaced and she got pregnant and she showed me the baby just the magnificent mighty last was it last Sunday the guy that his liver was torn yeah the liver was torn 26 centimeters in an accident they were going to take him for his surgery. His wife said, let's join next level this morning. We joined. I mentioned this case and prayed. He said, while I was praying, he felt I felt the cold feeling on my body in the intensive care unit. He told his wife, he said, I've been healed. He said, I said, thank you, but the doctors are coming. Doctors came and just discovered that the liver that was not perfect, the x-ray had changed in 24 hours. That's the grace of God. The reason why I'm saying this to you is that no matter where you are, believe that you can have a miracle and god does not give miracle because you're perfect he gives out of his goodwill out of his kindness out of his mercy she was even giving up but the faith of our friend strengthened our faith all right praise god so we're talking about overcoming the causes of depression and um i'm going to say something that i'm going to ask all of us to share I, and the reason why is that two kinds of sharing people can share their own stories that sometimes are even that will validate what we're saying then people that have a huge depression concern we can also get to many to them personally all right so let's do this together all right Nehemiah chapter 8 oh wow Nehemiah chapter 8 and this is why you have to overcome depression this is why you have to overcome depression Nehemiah chapter 8 in verse 10 Nehemiah chapter 8 
in verse 10. The Bible says, and it said unto them, go, go your way, eat and eat the fat and drink the sweet and send portions for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto the Lord. Neither be ye sorry for your, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Now, the context, Nehemiah said something here. And if there's someone I want to talk about depression or emotional issues, it would be Nehemiah. Now, the cause of Nehemiah's problem was that Nehemiah was trying to rebuild the wall. But as he tried to rebuild the wall, there were people that were fighting against him. And the fight was an emotional warfare. Let me, let me jump quickly to Nehemiah chapter 6. Nehemiah chapter 6. I want to read verse, verse 1 to you. The Bible says, And it came to pass when Sambalat and Tobias and the Greshinas, the Amorites, and the rest of our enemies had I built the wall, and there was no breach, though at the time I had not stopped the gates, that Sambalat and Gershom sent unto them, saying, Come, let's meet together in some village, in the plain of honor, and they taught to do me evil. Did you see that? It was an emotional warfare. You know what happened? You know, when did this not work? You know, when this did not work, you know what they did? Ever look at me. I wish you can read the whole of chapter 6, but I don't have the time. They got a false prophet to prophesy to Nehemiah. Question, why were they doing it? It was a psychological warfare. You know, let me see if I can, show, I can jump and show you. Because sometimes Satan will use every means to talk to you. And why is he talking to you? There's a certain emotion of fear, of failure that he wants you to feel. Satan is very, very smart. See what the Bible says here. You know, um, verse 5, same chapter, verse 5. The Bible says this, then, you know, they, they sent him a letter, verse 5, he replied. Then I sent it to them and said, there are no such things done that thou mayest fit out of their hearts. Verse, no, no, verse 9 now, verse 9. For they all made us afraid, saying, see, see their work that their hands should be weakened from their work, though it should not be done, now therefore strengthen them. Nehemiah was praying. He said the reason why they were doing all of these things was to make us afraid. So when the devil wants to attack you, you know, many of you are used to some kind of attack, but many of you are not used to the fact that the devil can come into their emotions. Why does he do that? He was very smart. He understands if I can put fear in the heart of Nehemiah, Nehemiah himself will stop building the wall. The reason why the devil attacks emotions with depression is this. If you are depressed, you will not achieve anything significant with your life. That's the reason why. So Nehemiah now told us what he was saying. Nehemiah began to say things like, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So the purpose of depression, and this is what I'm saying, this is why you have to overcome depression. Depression steals the future and steals our potential by depleting our strength and our joy. It depletes our strength and our joy. So, for example, there was a way, look at Nehemiah, there was a way he was passionate about building the wall. Maybe you're a business person here. There's a lot going on in business, but all of a sudden, things happen, you've lost your passion. You don't want to pursue it again. There's some of you, it's not business, it's relationship. Something happened, you've lost your passion. You've lost your passion. You don't want to pursue it again. And you wonder, why am I not able to pursue this? The reason why I'm not able to pursue further is that your joy has what been depleted. And that's what Nehemiah was saying. He said, the joy of the Lord. So Nehemiah said, no matter what they tried to do to my emotion, what he did was to find a way to keep what? His joy. Because once your joy is gone, your strength is gone. And once your strength is gone, you don't have the power to pursue like you will pursue. I told you the story last week. You know, I'm a minister. I've been in the midst of the gospel. And gradually, I slipped into a depression. I found myself in a very dark place in my life. Where I wrote a note to my wife. I sent her a WhatsApp message. I said, I'm not just sure what can happen in the future. And I said, just, I'm not sure what can happen in the future. And I said, um, these are the things that belong to me. And I was in a dark place. And I'm saying so because many of you here are businessmen or businesswomen. And you're so depressed about your business. Many of you are depressed about your children. Many of you are depressed about your marriage. Some of you are depressed about your relationship. And 
depression is awful. And depression is so bad because once depression comes into your life, it's like a magnet. It will begin to bring what? All the negative things into your depression. One lady testified some time ago here. And she said, I got depressed. Then I became sick with a lump. Then I lost my job. Then I got duped. And I said, can't you see the cycle? The first thing that started was what? The depression. And every other thing what? Got into it. This is the reason why I don't want to be in a depressed place. Because if you stay in a place of depression, you will open the door for all the evil things to begin to what? To come in. It will start with something that is very small. Then before you know it, it will affect your job. Before you know it, it will affect your marriage. In fact, I posted online and I posted online and it's on my, it's on my post. And one lady said, I understand this because my father died. And I said, what do you mean? He said, my father was depressed and the doctor said he had cancer. He said, every time I went to do the cancer test, there was no cancer seen. But the doctor said he had cancer. He said, we managed it until he died eventually. But the doctor said there was no cancer. He said, eventually the depression brought evil. You don't want to be in that place. You see, I, I'm not saying to you that you can just get over it and it's nothing. No, that's what I'm saying. That would be very rude to say that. But I'm only saying to you that you need to use all the energy you have to push yourself to get out of that place. Look at the last lady. What about if she did not talk? What about if she did not talk? So we began to talk about the causes of depression. So we said, number one, so we spoke about Elijah, 1 Kings chapter 19. I'm going to jump quickly. 1 Kings chapter 19. Someone say hallelujah. Amen. Say God is good and kind Amen. to me. Amen. Yeah. So, you know, I'm talking and as I'm speaking, I'm aware of the global audience. A lot of you are there watching on Facebook. Some of you are watching on YouTube and Instagram. I'm talking to you right now. Maybe you're depressed because there are a lot of costs of depression. In this service, one of the things you'll find is that you will be able to find strength to push through what you're going through. But the first thing I wanted to tell you was this. Number one, you must understand that depression is not about something. It's, see, depression can start with relationship, with marriage, with a job, with a business. But it's not about all of those things. Satan is going for your soul. That's what I'm going to. So when you see someone that is depressed, it's like with the fact that I lost money, I, I didn't get a contract, I, got, I, I had a divorce, I had a child that I went long. But at the end of the day, what Satan is going for is for your soul. He's hoping he can steal your future. And that's why today, you need to make up your mind and say, I'm not going to allow Satan to take over my soul and use the pressure. Will you bring that rope for me? It's a very simple thing Satan does. Bring the rope quickly. Yeah, bring it quickly. Yeah, you, you come with him. Or you, okay, want me to do it myself? That's fine. You know, see, Satan can't stop him. You know what Satan does? Keep going. Then Satan puts just a little thought. Just a little thought. Just, you can let me sort it out, you know, right there. He puts just a little thought. And you know what he does? He begins to pull him with his little thought. And that thought becomes stronger until the Bible calls it a stronghold. It becomes what? A strong. It's a thought that has what? A hold on you. And it was something. All that happened was that he lost his job. But now, that's not affected his self-esteem. The self-esteem has not affected his relationship. That's not affected his business. He's not making poor decisions. The whole future is destroyed because of one little thought that was put inside him. You don't want... You don't want the question is this. And, and hold, hold this for me. This is what I said in the earlier service. I said, when the devil wants to attack you, he lies to you. I said, oh wow, when you believe the lie, you empower the liar. Did you get that? When you believe the lie, you empower the liar. So the question is that which lie have you believed that's holding you captive? So the devil uses a lie to what? To hold you captive. What is the lie? Because you didn't do something, you're not good enough. Because of that, nobody will love you. Because of this, everybody will cheat you. And he uses one lie to hold you paralyzed. Glory to God. I say glory to God. And that's a good time to clap. Praise the Lord. That's a good time to clap. So what are the causes of depression? We're trying to read First Kings chapter 19 that speaks about the depression of a man called Elijah. You know, what are the causes of depression? Number one, medical causes. I want to start with the medical because sometimes when pastor teach about depression, we teach in a very funny way as if there are no medical reasons. Sometimes depression is caused because of an imbalance in the bones. And that's why sometimes you have to see a doctor, see a therapist. There are vital um, organs in our body that, you know, that do that. Look at First Kings. And that's why when 
Elijah was depressed in First Kings chapter 19. You know what the angel did when he did? The angel told him, eat and sleep. Simple. Eat and what? Sleep. Because sometimes the hormonal balance you need will just respond to food. My brother, eat all. Eat all. Eat well. All. Some of you that you think you are depressed, it's hunger. All. Eat well. Eat well and sleep well. But the second cause of the, the second cause which I explained a lot in the other service was the second cause of depression is because of stress and burnout. You know, look at first Samuel chapter 19. In chapter 18, Elijah had had a big victory, declaring victory over them. In chapter 19, you know what had happened to him? In chapter 19, Elijah was threatened by by Jezebel. Can I say something to you? Sometimes what causes depression is just the unhealthy pace of life. Is what the unhealthy pace of life. L- let me get someone. Let me get someone I can ask to you know to just come and you know um, I, I want to get someone that can you know yeah this guy in the choir right. What do you do? You play the instrument right? The gear exactly. That's good. But just come over here. Just come over here. So sometimes what causes depression is it's hormonal imbalance which is medical but it's on a healthy pace. Sometimes life is not a straight plane. It's up and down. Today you have a business deal then something happens then dollar changes and the guy loves you. It's on a healthy pace. You know what I do? Just run up, run down, run up. Yeah, let's go. Want to go. Yeah. You know, formerly you could see me was cool, calm. He's going to run five times. So what causes depression is on a healthy pace of life. It causes burnout and causes stress. It causes burnout and causes stress. Oh, I love this guy. He's doing so well. Go, 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 go. You have seven, five more rounds to go. That's the second one. Yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go, 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 go faster, go faster. Yeah, on healthy pace of life. You know, because many of you don't realize this is how life is. Before you know it, you are jumping from one transaction to another deal to another disappointment. It's just life. Life is not a smooth surface. And if your life is a smooth surface, I need to know what you do. Yeah. What can you notice? It's slowing down. It's slowing down. Life is taking a toll. That's why everybody wants to remain a child. Yeah. Go, 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 go. Yeah. 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 You have three more hands. Three more hands. Quickly go. Three, three. Uh, what are you doing like this? Question. How do you feel? You're getting tired. You're getting tired. Oh, hold on. Why are you getting tired? Is there anything spiritual? No, it's nothing. Sometimes in life, the problems you have is just the pace. It's just the fact that it's life. Sometimes, listen, Christians spiritualize every problem. They make Satan popular. Some things is not satanic. It's just life. It's just a pace. Listen to me. Some of you are young here. You know, you may not want to hear it. Some people will date you and leave. Some people date you, stay and get married. It's just life. It's sometimes not demonic. You've been, some of you girls are here and you were very ashamed of someone you fell in love with in your previous past. In your, in your previous life, rather. Life, you grew. Some of you are business people here. You will lose, you will lose money. It's part, the fact that you lost money does not mean your life is over. But something that God promises us, thank you, my brother. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. I don't want to jump this quickly so that we can get into this. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. First Corinthians 10, 13. The message translation, quickly, please. First Corinthians 10, 13. The message translation. DJ, hurry. Look at what the Bible says. Can we read together one to go? Can we read together one to go? Can we read together one to go? Let's go. No test or temptation that comes your way is beyond the cause of what? Hold on. When Satan wants to deal with you, it will, it will, make, it will make you think you are the only one. You will not be asking questions like, why me? But there's no problem you have that is not common to everyone. Look at the next line. He says, all you need... Listen to me. When you feel depressed, this is all you need to remember. What do you need to remember? That God will never let you down. He will never let you 
Push. Did you hear that? I don't know if you're going through a loss, a disappointment. Maybe you had the child that said, well, look, your marriage is so somehow. God says, I know what you can carry and I will never let you be pushed beyond your limits. Okay. I, I need my microphone to start moving right now. My first question. Who here, when you were depressed, it was, so the first two things is medical, the stress and burnout. The third cause of depression would be disconnections, isolation, and loneliness. First, first Kings chapter 19. The Bible says, and, and Elijah left his servant and he went alone. So, who here can tell us when you were depressed, what was the cause of it? What, which, which of these reasons was the cause of it? What of the reasons was the cause of it? I want someone in the middle or on the side. Just raise up your hands. Yeah. When you were depressed, what was the cause of it? Yeah. You know, it's quite dark, so you have to raise up your hands a bit up. Okay, can I get this, this lady in front? Uh, there's a lady in front here. There's a woman in front. Yeah, yes. tell me. You can have your seat. You don't have to stand up. Because of my depression was uh, when I lost my job. Okay. I first lost my marriage. Wow. So the jo job was like a cover-up for me. I mean, like, how long was the interval? Like... Um, Four years, five years. Okay, okay. So the job was like a cover up for me. I wake, I work so hard. After I, I, I'm a teacher. So you were distracting hard. yourself with the, with the job. Watch this now. What are the wrong ways to deal with depression or emotional issue? The first one, medicate. Medicate is when you look for something temporarily to get over it. E.g. weed. E.g. cocaine. E.g. sex with someone that is not, you're not married to. And what you're looking for, e.g. alcohol, you're looking for a temporary person to get away with. The other thing is motivate where you give your depression work to do. In our own world, that's what she did. So, they will see you working so hard. They will think you're hard working. They don't know that it's depression that's working through you. Continue, man. So, after... When I became a principal, all of a sudden, I didn't know the school was going to use me to get approval. They took me from a good school to come and start up for them. Yeah. So after the day I got the approval, they gave me a letter that, thank you very much, this is how much you can work with us. So I fell into depression for like two years. As a single mom, I couldn't hold my kids. I had to return my kids to my when, parents. When they told you that this is what you can do, why did you fall into depression? Because when they took me from my well-paying job, what they told me was that they were they want us to build the school together and I will be like a partner like that. I didn't know the wife is a teacher in government. So I didn't know his plan was somebody to just bring the school with my knowledge. Because I have the knowledge of Cambridge and the rest, just to use me to build the school. So when they get to 11. So, so when they say go, why did you get depressed? I want to know, what, what did that mean to you? The reason why I'm saying so is that, I want to know something. The pressure is not really what happens about the meaning you give to it. What did that mean to you, madam? I, that was the only support system I had. Because most people around me don't understand what I was going through. Good. So, so you felt you, I you, was you, complaining too much if I'm trying to express myself. Okay. So I became so bitter, so angry that I, I, if I scream at the kids... I can stay in my room for a week without stepping in the city room. I lost accommodation. I lost, in fact, I lost everything. Presently, I stay alone. I don't have my kids with me. I can just be in my house for weeks. I okay. will not get to the door. Okay. So the question is that, so you are still in that state right now? I will say yes. Okay. The major thing with, the major thing with how you say it is that when they took the job from you, two things happened. Number one, I think the job was your self-esteem. You were married, it was your self-esteem, it was your husband. And the second thing about the job was that the job was also your livelihood. So, I think you can figure out another way to make money, but the challenge was that your self-esteem was gone. I, I tried. After three years, I... I the thing I, is that, let me, tell you, let, let, me tell you, let me tell you why you will not do well, even though you try. Because once your self-confidence is gone, you'll be making mistakes that confirm exactly what you think you are. 
You'll be, you would, you would, you would take, and this is why when people get the kind of trouble, the small money they have in trying to invest it, they lose it. Did that happen to you? I even went. No, I'm asking question. a question. Did, did that happen I to lost, you? Uh, you lost it. The reason why is that people see when something goes. Everybody, let me teach you a trick. When something goes wrong, fix inside, not outside. When something goes wrong, most of us are trying to say, let me look for money to do this. No, your inside will take away the money. Your, your life will reduce to your level of thought or at sense your level of thought. I will tell you what I think you should do. Um, this is not the intervention, so I'll tell you what I need to do. I think the first thing you have to do is to stay with people that will help you change your mind. What? What do you say? I said out because I don't have friends. I'm far from my family because most of them. Can you see the mentality coming range. out? Can you see the mentality coming out? The mentality is my coming out gradually. Brought me here. Yeah. Yeah. The, when I first started coming here. Yeah. So, so, so the question is that the question is this: the reason why you don't know how is because you are in a state where you cannot know how. When you are in a state of depression, you can never know how. So, the thing is this. Remember what I didn't say. I didn't say, find how to do it. I say, find people. The reason why is that I'm trying, you know what I'm trying to do? Truman, where's Truman? Where's he? Where's he? Someone else comes, someone else comes that can support. One of the, yeah. You know why it's actually, I didn't say do anything. You know why I find people. What you need right now? You're depressed. You need people to carry you. That's what you need. You need people to carry you. That's what you need. You need people to carry me. Carry me. I need people to carry. Let me tell you something. When you're emotionally down, you will know what to do and you will not be able to do it. What you need at that moment is persons to carry you. Ma'am, I want to help. I want you to look for people to carry you. I'm, I'm not saying this way go and invest money. The first thing that you need people that can build your emotional capacity. So why are you crying? Why are you crying? You have the microphone. I don't know how. Everybody thinks I'm a failure. Did you, did you, did you, yeah. Evil people around me, they are blaming me. They don't understand what I'm going through. I don't know how to do it. I don't know what to do. I can't even take care of myself, take care of, take care of my children. I don't know what to do myself. I'm just tired. I can't sleep. You can't sleep. And my BP is bad. Yeah. The little money she has, the drugs begin to what? Take it. I told you how negativity works. It's, you know, you know, it's moved from losing a job to something else. Have you noticed this right now? It's moved from losing a job to what? Something else. I want to ask you a question, ma'am. So when, what are you going to change? When is this going to change? This is my third service here today. I've been crying throughout the service. It's like... I've not gone to church for some time. Something just somebody gave me money and I said I'm going to get to church today. So what is going to change today for you? Madam, look at me. This year, tell me three things you're thankful for. Tell me three things that happened to you that you're thankful for. You think of their life. That's wonderful. What else? You don't know. I Just know. what? I thank God that my life and my kids are healthy. Your kids are healthy. What about you? If what about the two that your kids in accidents right now? What will happen? Sir? If they told you that your your child is in accident right now, what will happen? I'll, I'll just I'll throw the towels in. That's the only happiness that I have now. That's the only happiness you have. Good. Ma'am, I want to say something to you. You know the first thing I said to the folk that can support you, but I want to say something you can do. 
Can you focus on what is going well in your life? I want to ask you. Let me tell you what is going well in your life. Number one, you are alive. Yes or no? Yes, How many kids do you have? What are their names? Wonderful. Are they happy that you're alive? What class are they in school right now? The one, the senior one, the boy is in SS1. Yeah. And the second they, one is in primary two. When they see you, what did they say to you? They are very happy. They hardly see you. They, they are very happy, but they hardly see you. But when you see them, happy. you are happy. What about if you didn't have children? Let me tell you some things to be thankful for. Someone invited you here. Yes or no? Someone invited you. You say your brother or someone. No, he was the one that invited me meet a member here. Who is the person? Uh, Michael Ajay. Mr. Michael Ajay. And someone gave you money to come to church right? also, right? When the person gave money to come to church, what do you think? Who do you, who do you think sent the person? Why did the person do that? Huh? God. What does that mean to you? That God loves you. That God thinks about you. The reason I'm saying so is that there are many things in your life that are negative. There are many things in your life that are positive. But the reason why you are depressed is that over time you have trained yourself to consistently focus over what is negative. You know what I want to do? I want you to pray a prayer. Madam, I want you to pray a prayer. I want you to thank God for your children that they are alive. I want you to thank God. Thank God right now. Pray in the microphone. And I thank you. I thank you for Tobit and I thank you for Teila. I bless your name because they are alive and you grant them good health. Thank you, Jesus. I don't take you for granted. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hold on. How do you feel right now? Relieved. Relieved? What relieved you? The thing is that you just focus because the thing is that once you stay in a place where you are depressed, you will not know what to do. But once you can change your attention and stay in a place of positivity, what will happen? You will know exactly what you should do. Two things, madam. I want to say something. Two things. It may be deeper than this. You may need some of our pastors to sit down with you because sometimes this goes for a long time. So two things. Number one, can you take some time and look for people to support you. In this church, be like, I just need support. Go to one of the pastors and say that I just need people to support me emotionally. I'm never asking for money. So to support them emotionally. That's the first thing. But the second thing is this. Every day, I want you to open a notebook for the next 21 days. Every morning and evening, write three things you are thankful for. So I'll tell you three things today. Father, I'm alive. My children are healthy. And someone gave me, someone gave me money to come to church. I'm grateful. This evening, you're right. The pastor spotted me and spoke to me. God, you used him to identify me and talk to him. Thank you for noticing me. Thank him for things like that. The moment you think, what will happen? Your life will change. Why do you think God made me pick you to talk to you today? Because other people raised up their hands. Why did they pick you? To be God. Because I wasn't really raising up my hand. Was just you were, you were like this. So God made me raise up, pick you, right? Yes, sir. Wow. Why do you think God made me pick you? Because He loves me. He oh, loves He me. loves you. Oh, you know He loves you. God loves you. That's great. So that's why I want to go on with the service today. That God what loves me. Say God loves me. God loves. Me. Let me ask you the last question. During these four years that things have been difficult, has it been ever tight before and you had a miracle? When was that? What happened? Maybe it was house rent, you couldn't eat, you didn't have money, and something happened. Feeding, most times. Feeding. What happened with the feeding? Tell me one story. Mm, there was a time that I was at home for like three, four, five days. Yeah. I had only small gary, so I shared it into portions. Yeah. So I turned it into fasting in the evening. I would just drink the gary. So on the fourth day, 
one of my brothers. I just got a lot from them. Did it, and the person, they, they didn't ask them that period, right? No. What does that tell it was you? It towards, towards Christmas. It was towards Christmas. You know what I'm telling you this? God did not forsake you. Why will he right now? Why is the thought of forsaken filling your mind? See, without you asking your brother, he sent you money. Today now, someone gave money to come to church. We're talking about you. You came to church, the pastor picked you. And you think that your life doesn't matter. It matters a whole lot. How do you feel right now? Better. You feel better? Thank you. Yes, give it to Lydia. Lydia wants to share a story. Yeah. We'll take this and we'll close the service. Amen. Yeah. Amen yes. Church. So you want to share the story about the cause of the depression and what 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 happened to you at that state? Yeah. Um. So for me, my depression started um, a little after my marriage ended. Twenty sixteen. Um, because of the society that we live in, where as a public figure, you're expected to live a certain type of way. Um, they expect you to suffer and smile, and you really can't come out, because the more you do come out, the more they talk about what is not. So, um, in the midst of all of that, the depression started, and... What were the signs that you were depressed? What were the things? The signs were I lost um, my zeal for anything. I wow. began to isolate myself a lot. I, I want to talk about that because other people are here and they're wondering, other people are watching online. You know, so you lost your zeal for everything. So you and you are a Hollywood star, an actress. So when you got like a job in the Hollywood, you were not interested again? Oh, yes. Totally. I turned down a lot, a lot of jobs. You turned down jobs? I did. I did. Were you concerned with the fact that you were impoverishing yourself, impoverishing yourself or you didn't care? At that point, I really didn't care. Wow. At, at that point, I really You began didn't to care. self-sabotage your success. Totally. Wow. And I just felt there was really nothing to live for at some point. There was nothing to live for. Yeah. And I... Was... You know, you know, Lydian is big deal in the industry, in Hollywood, because some of you are hiding. And some of you stand said it's just for this person. Would you, if you ever see her, and that's why I say, depression does not have a face. Well, people saw you and they thought you were perfect, right? Totally, yeah. And you always have to put up a front that everything is good. And everyone keeps, at that point, I got a lot of messages, people asking me, how did you do it? And I'm like, Psh. <laughs> why she was depressed people were asking her how did she do it wow what made you come out of this I think it was um, after a friend of mine pulled me out of it did you see what I'm saying most of the time when people come out of depression it's not all the time there will be someone that is there that would hold them up emotionally. You know what I said that? If your friend is depressed, don't invite them. I say drag them. Because they will not be able to help themselves. And most of you, if, you, if you're depressed here, you must find a way to link with the pastors, link with the cell, get to someone. So I want to talk to Pastor Bologi. Yes, I also want to talk to you, but you need someone that will be there every day. And that's not Pastor Bologi. So, so this is your friend. What, what did this your friend do? Because I was actually on my way at that particular day. I decided I was just going to up and leave. I totally had already... You're going started. to run away. I, was, I already started my plan to just wow. relocate and just, you know, leave everything behind and who I was to just start off my life somewhere else in a different country entirely. I already started my first phase and I have actually been ignoring people. I didn't pick up calls. My family didn't even know my plan was to just elope. So notice now, the second sign of isolation, the second sign and cause of depression, isolation. I've said it before, isolation precedes destruction. Yep, so I was in the second phase of my um, Jack Bass scheme, and my friend did call me, and normally I would not pick up the call, but I did. And the first question he said was, 
How are you? Can I say something to you? Not, not Lillian, say them to everyone. If you're depressed, if you can look carefully, you will see the signs that God is following you. I'm telling you. If you're depressed, the point is that you may not recognize or say it all, but if you look carefully, it's most of the time when you come out of the depression that you now look back and say, hey, whoa, so God was following me and I never realized. Because even when you're in danger to yourself, your shepherd follows you. That's what, the, that's what David understood when he says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he says, I will fear no evil because thou art with me. But you are not in me the way I know you as a shepherd. He said, thy rod and thy staff. I may not see the shepherd, but there's direction. There's someone saying, oh my God. When he says your rod and your staff, there's someone saying this way, this way. You want to injure yourself, but don't injure yourself beyond this point. So he allows you to take cocaine, but not the one that will make you mad. So you say, I went crazy, but you're wondering, how did I not go so crazy? Because God was somewhere in between that journey, preserving you. And let me tell you something. The moment you can see that God is protecting you, you have begun to heal. Yes, ma'am. So your friend, your friend yes, came. Yes, he did. He was like, how are you? Because at that point, the internet was, they were going crazy. And he said he just wanted to check in to see if I was okay. And I just started crying. I busted out crying. And I just, for the first time, opened up to um, my friend. And he says, no, um, you're not going to, I'm not going to give up on you, even if you had given up on yourself. That this is not who you are. This is the time to prove that you are more than this. Wow. You know, he went on and on. And, and when he began to say that, you thought, to, well, this guy doesn't understand what I'm going through. Absolutely. Yeah. He didn't understand, but I just decided to open up my heart and listen. For some funny reason, I don't know, maybe it was God that, you know, made me listen. It was God. I'm sure it was right now. I know it is God. It was God. Praise God. Yes. What would you say to someone that is in a place, in a dark place right now? Don't give up. Just focus on God and trust him to do the, what's best for you because he did bring you into this world for a purpose. So you should find that purpose and dwell on it. Praise God. Praise God. Wow. Let's take one more. Uh, the, the last person I want to take is someone that is really, really in a bad place. Someone that is really, really in a bad place. And that's why you came. Are you the one, sir? Okay, yeah. Where, where, there was a lady that was in the hand. Where's the lady? Okay, let's do the lady first. Let's do the sir first and I'll do the lady. But yes. So you're really in a bad place right now. Yeah, tell me. Um, so, my business is more or less my saving grace. I was in a position of depression for a very long time because this is something I haven't actually shared. Um, January. 6th, oh, I, I remember you. <laughs> yeah. January 6th, um, 2021, I was poisoned by a friend. And I had respiratory failure. I ran out actually naked. And I was about to die. I said my final prayers. I was next to my mom. I told her I'm sorry that I'm going. Then I looked up to God and I told him I'm sorry too. And I could feel the heart attack ready to come. And everything didn't matter at that point. It was darkness. All my friends had left me. Everyone would mock me. Nobody would understand. The way my parents raised me was to be free and loving. But they misunderstand it for pride and cockiness. And when I was saved by the doctor, I so, went through a series so of... So are you still in your state of depression yes. right now? So what is going on with you right now? How do I you still know have the fear of death. Yeah. And 
it affects my business because, you know, if I die, then I lose everything. I also still... So when uh, do you have this fear of death? In the mornings? In, in the, the evenings? Mornings, in the evenings, when I'm about to sleep. Yeah. I have nightmares every time. I had a nightmare the day before yesterday. Got stabbed multiple times. Although I managed to pull the knife out of my chest and stab the person back. But I was still really hurt. And it also manifests in my workplace because no matter how good I am to people around me, I have a lot of envy in my business community. Good. And they steal a lot from my business. So, so let, let, let me tell you what you're saying to me. Yeah. You're saying to me that a lot of things are happening to me and I have no control over it. Is that yeah. true? Yeah. That's true? Yeah. Is that really true? No. It's so what, not because it, I end up having, anytime I go through because, something. Because you're saying that you have control right now. I, I end up, by God's mercy, overcoming. But then So the, the, question moment, is, the question is this. What do you need to control first? My emotions. Your emotions respond to something. They respond to your thoughts. Yeah. I condemn myself a lot. Yeah. And you tell yourself you're going to die soon. Yeah. So if you tell yourself you're going to die soon, what kind of dream will you have? Dreams of death. So why are you surprised at your dream? I'm not really surprised, but it just happens. And, you know, when you're scared, you might not be surprised that you're scared, but you're still more or less scared. So, so the question is that if you're scared... What makes you scared? Scared of um, being alone, not oh. being accepted. I'm scared of not being able to achieve my dreams. Of um, actually have powerful ambitions. Of okay, let me ask you a question. Yeah. You're scared of not being of not being able to achieve your dreams. Yeah. You dreamt of coming to church today. It was a dream to come to church today. You did it. Yeah. Why don't you do other things? I do. Yeah. The way you're going to build confidence is that you're going to look back at all the good things I've done and say, the Lord that helped me do this will also do that. Yeah. Learn it from David. You know what David said? David said when he faced Goliath. He's never faced Goliath before. He said, but the Lord that helped me kill the bear, the help that helped me kill the lion, the help me kill the tiger, he said, would also help me with this. Tell me three breakthroughs you've had in your life. Oh, so the first big thing is that you were safe from death. You are a rare human being. Yeah. Like, this, you, you know, if I were you, I would say, a poison could not kill me. Nothing can kill me again. Yeah, true. The question is that, what meaning are you giving to the experience you have? Are you giving yourself meaning that makes you bold and strong? Or you're giving yourself meaning that makes you fearful? It's a mixture of both. I have, I have like a spasm of confidence and spasms of depression. And so the question is that, how are we going to deal with the spasm of what? Of negative. Of, negative. Of, of negative. Of negative. So what, what makes you have this positive of negativity? What makes you have it? Um, when, I'm trying to, uh, when I'm trying to grab more of, the, of my dreams, when I'm trying to achieve more, yeah. and it seems that it's, it's not coming forth in a way that, oh, how do I explain it? Um, people that are meant to help me end up being the ones that hurt me. Okay, good. If I were you, I would think of Joseph. That the reason they do that is because their attempt to hurt me will promote me. The question is not what is happening to you. It's the meaning you are giving to it. Mm. If, if I was poisoned and I survived like you did, the kind of way I would feel about life, like, ha! I, I have that, but then at the same time... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The reason why you don't is because you're cutting me off right now. Sorry. You know, you know what I'm saying? So, not because you're cutting me off. I'll tell you what I mean. The reason why you're cutting me off is because when the time that thought comes, I want to solidify. You allow another thought to rise. And the thing is that, the first thing that you're feeling helpless, but you're feeling helpless in your thoughts. You are not taking your thought captive. Your thoughts are powered in your mind. What I'm saying to you is that, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, the Bible says, so capture thought. You can choose to think what you want to think. Yeah. You can choose and say, I'm not thinking this thought. I'm thinking this thought. And let me tell you what to do. The way you challenge your thoughts is that when a thought comes to your mind, say something. Thought bow to utterance. Mm. 
taught bow to utterance. So sometimes I could feel very fearful. I could feel very fearful. So for example, we're having this conference in um, Wembley and Satan says to me, oh, are you sure people are going to come? You know, you know, there was a great conference over the weekend and there are more conferences coming up. He said, oh, people will be tired by your conference. I'm telling you, people will be tired by your conference. People will never even come. And, and I smiled. I said, I have an abundance mentality. What's an abundance mentality? Is that there's always much more. And where is that mentality coming from? Scriptures. The harvest is plenteous. It didn't say the harvest is scarce. That we are all trying to struggle for some scramble. It says the harvest is what? Plenteous. I tell myself what to think. Because what I tell myself becomes what I feel. True. So I think that, let me tell you what I think you need to do. My recommendation, morning and evening have an affirmation that you say based on God's word. Say it over and over. You will sleep better. You will wake up better. You will notice in exactly 60 days all your panic attacks will be gone. If you can follow this by saying it morning and evening, the affirmation should start with what you're thankful for and should move that way. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. All right. Thank Praise you. God. Thank you. Right. Yeah. The last person. The last person. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lady that was raising up the hands on the side. Yeah. No, there was a lady just... Yeah, yeah, with the, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, the root cause of my um, depression is generational patterns. More like, like every year, somebody in my family died. Oh, wow. My mother gave birth to eight children, yeah. and we are just four right now. Like, you just, I would just be surprised. What's your name? Juliana. Every year, someone dies. Yes. Is that true? Yes. Okay. But for about, let's say, five years, we noticed that there's like a break. Did you hear that now? Yes. The reason why is that, once again, it's not every year that someone dies. I, I just had to, the reason why, is that I just had to ask you a question that will redirect your focus. Because you said every year someone dies, but I know it's not true because you guys are eight with your father and mother, that's ten. The way I look at you, you are almost 25 or going to 30. If every year someone dies, you'll be dead. But the problem is that the moment you give the place to Satan and start saying that every year someone dies, you begin to give power to that demonic spirit of death. And the demonic spirit of death, because the Bible says, the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. So, you know, every year someone dies, so what happens? Hey, demon, come on now. Every year someone dies. Then you've now told the demon that you're on a break. The demon says, oh, we didn't know we're on a break. Now that we know, we are coming back off the break. I think, I'm not listening to the whole story, but because of my time, I think the first thing you have to do is to change your thinking. And I don't think it's just you. I think the whole family is changing their thinking. Yes. And be like, we live in this family. Because just imagine all what you said. And that's why sometimes this is very spiritual for me. Because I can even see beyond what is going on. So I think that the reason why death comes to your family is because there's an expectation for you to come. Let me show you a scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 8, 15. I will show you this, and this is, I'm done. I'm done. 2 Corinthians 2, verse 15. Put on the screen. 2 Corinthians 2, verse 15. So it's like some of you, everybody I did breaks off with me. They will. It's the law of attraction. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Look at what the Bible says. Second, sec, oh, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 15. I'm sorry. There are too many scriptures. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 2, verse 15. Praise God. Watch this now. Can we read together? Give, out the, give, give the, the lady to read. Are you with the microphone still? Yes. Read. And deliver them all through fear of death where all their lifetime subject to bondage. Who had them subject? Was it death or the fear of death? Thank you. That sounds like something that is familiar. It says, through the fear of death, all their life were held on to what? Bondage. Stand. Let's pray. Praise God. Hallelujah. Stand. Let's pray. Let's pray. Everybody stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Wow. The way you're standing as if some of you are really old or something. Stand. Stand. Hold your neighbor's hands. Hold your neighbor's hands. Hold your neighbor's hands. Just one neighbor. Not two neighbors. Just one neighbor. Just one neighbor. Just one neighbor. Just one neighbor. Not two neighbors. Just one. Two hands to one person. 
two hands to one person look at him and say the joy of the Lord is your strength I'm going to pray for you say to your neighbor say I'm going to pray for you that through the season of life God will give your joy strong go ahead and pray for them go ahead and pray for them that through the season of life that God will give your joy strong that through the seasons of life God will keep your joy strong thank you Jesus nothing will take your joy begin to declare we break the power of depression in this room we break the power of depression in this room all of you online declare we break the power of depression in this room over men, over women, over businesses, over older people, over younger people. We break the power of depression in this room. In Jesus' name we pray. And Lord, we take authority over the spirit and the attack of depression. And we break your influence over every mind and everybody here in the name of Jesus Christ. Let joy rise up strong from your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord.